I, I've been really trying to uh, I don't know, bring into focus or, or to uh, understand this word. And uh, I'm, I'm going to do the best I can today to give it to you in the order that God gave it to me. And uh, if there's anything I realize it's today, it's that I'm not in charge. I am not in control of anything. And uh, God, if, if I know if I was running things, things would be different. It might not be better, but they'd be different. <laughs> and uh, because it seemed like this week, it seemed like like we got a lot of phone calls and a lot of text messages from a lot of people that were going through some stuff. Mm. And uh, it seemed like that, that uh, there's just a lot of things going on right now. Our, our, uh, our country is never very far out of my mind. Mm -hmm. And the, the shape of the world, the condition mm -hmm. that the world is in is never very far removed from my thinking because it just seems like the whole world is on the verge of destroying itself mm -hmm. and on the verge of collapse and it seems like from a from a, a, a humanistic a, a human viewpoint it doesn't seem to be any there doesn't seem to be any solution for it mm -hmm. from from what I can tell uh, it seems like the whole world is is hell bent on destroying itself mm -hmm. and uh, so that's always always sort of in, in in my mind and it's always sort of percolating in there and, and I, I can't say I'm always thinking about it I'm always focused on it but it's never very far away and so there's always this sense of of, of uh, crying out to God for for help, for solutions to to the, the problems and the and the things that we face in the world, it it oftentimes feels like Satan's just winning every battle mm -hmm. yeah. on every front. And I I, it, I know how things end. I do. I know that in the end. God is going to be victorious. Yeah. Jesus Christ is going to come yes. back yes. and he is going to set up his rule and reign and he is going to, he's finally going to mete out the, the punishment and the, the, what Satan has deserved all these years. I know that happens. But sometimes for me, this is, my, this is me speaking, sometimes I, I wonder how I'm going to get there. How I'm going to survive the journey between now and then, because I'm not sure when then is. I know I'm I'm going to be 63 in a month, and I so I know that in the next 30 years or so, my journey is going to here on Earth is is some form going to come to an end, and I know that that in the end I win. I know this, mm -hmm. but I, I'm not always sure how I'm going to survive this week mm -hmm. or today, mm -hmm. and so. That was the, that was the, how my week went. So so all week long, and then and then on top of that, I'm. Uh, you guys have added some stress to my life, <laughs> and I, I want to say thank you. For that. <laughs> from the, I'm serious from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, because because I feel like my world has gotten bigger because of you guys because of you. But you bring your own problems into my world. Mm -hmm. Because when you have a problem, I have a problem now. Mm -hmm. And I already had my own problems <laughs> before you all came along. <laughs> but, and and I, I'm serious about this. Thank you for that. Because it, uh, so I, don't, I don't even know how to explain it. So somehow it makes me feel more alive. It makes me feel more like... Like, I'm doing something important to be involved in your life. Even if all I'm doing is praying for you. And uh, I know a lot of times, a lot of times we, we want to do more. We want to be more. I, I look around the room and I look in your faces and I look in your eyes. And there's, there's this things I want to take away. Things I want to, I want to take your burden. I want to, I want to take your fear. I want to take the things that you're concerned about. Because even though 
most of the things, maybe all of the things that we're concerned about are not real. Because in the end, they're, they're not going to matter. Mm-hmm. Not, but, the, but the thing is, those things are real now. Mm-hmm. They're real burdens now. And even though maybe it's only in our minds, maybe it's only worry or fear that, that is causing us to, to have stress or to, to be concerned about something, those things are very real, mm-hmm. and, and they're very real burdens. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I uh, so I feel all that. And, and by the I hope you feel the same way for each other. I do. I hope that you're carrying each other's burdens. I hope mm-hmm. that, that you come into this room and you look around the room and when you, when you greet each other, you, you share each other's uh, joys and triumphs. But I also hope that you share each other's burdens and, and that, you, that you actually it becomes a physical thing that you actually carry mm-hmm. for each other. It's a good thing to be that way. But I say all that to say that's how my week has gone. It's been, it's been a week of, of burdens. I, I was telling, I was telling uh, Brenda earlier today, I said, I feel, like, I feel like it's been one of those weeks where you get a phone call and the house is on fire and I need you to come home and the, there's a tornado coming and I need you to come home. There's an earthquake coming. There's a, a hurricane coming. And then there's all this... Like all this stuff is coming and I need you to get home. And so I feel like I'm, I've been sort of bombarded from all sides, not from you, but from, I, I don't know if it's from the enemy or even it might be from God. I'm not sure. But I know what it's done to me emotionally. I know how it's affected my spirit. And so it, what it does to me is, is I, I don't never have answers for any of this stuff except to go to God. That's what I do. That's, uh, that's all I know to do anymore. I started doing this years ago when I was going through stuff and I didn't have answers. And I said, so I just started rolling it over on God. And that's the only answer I have for anybody is you, you just got to, I just go to God. That's all I know to do. So that's what I've been doing all week is, is going to God and crying out to God and asking God, I need, I need for you to show me something and I honestly wanted God to give me something for you today. Mm-hmm. Something that you could really grab hold of that would, that, that would help you because your house is burning down or there's an earthquake or there's a tornado or a hurricane or there's, there's this violent thing swirling around. And I feel like what God gave me was a grocery list almost. <laughs> like... Oh, on the way home, I need you to stop at the store and pick up bread and milk. Because I feel like that's what this word is going to be today. I feel like it's just going to be almost a very basic thing. There's almost no... Uh, I, I've shared with you before sometimes when God gives me a word, there's a, there's a tension in it. There's a, a, a stirring in me. that, that like I, I have almost none of that today. You know, it, it's almost like I'm... I'm, I'm nervous because I don't have it. Because I'm used to being more tense. I'm used to being more uh, uh, passionate or something about it. But I really feel like today's word is, is more basic. It's, it's, I, I don't know who it's for exactly. I think it's for all of us. I think it's, I think it's, almost, uh, it's almost, uh, more general. It's like almost teaching. And I don't, I don't teach very much. I don't. I, I'm not a Bible teacher. I'm not going to, I don't pretend to be a Bible teacher. I don't study the Bible that way. It's not what God's called me to do. It's not what I am. Some people are. That's a, that's a wonderful thing. I'm not that. Uh, but I almost feel almost like this is more teaching. But God gave me a word this, this week, and he said this to me. And I... I'm going to tell you what God wants, but I'm not going to tell you how to do it. And I've really been asking God all week, could you please give me a how to go with the what? And Because I have the what and the why, but I don't have the how. So you're going to have to take what I'm going to say, what God's going to say, and you're going to have to think on it. You're going to have to, 
you're going to have to come to God with this because you're going to have to ask God to show you how he wants this to happen for you. Because mm -hmm. the first thing God told me was this. He said, he wants more of us. Mm -hmm. He wants more of us. Mm -hmm. Now, he said this to me right after he said he wants more of me. And he wants more of you because he said that's what he said. He said, I want more of you. But he said, tell my people I want more of them. He also said this. He says, I don't want more from them. I don't want more from you. I want more of you. Wow. Because he said what happens is he said, a lot of times my people hide behind giving me or trying to, to give me more from them. Yeah. So you, you think that by giving God more stuff, more things, more from you, that you're giving more of you, and God says, I, I don't need more from you. That ought to be basic to us. We ought to know by now that God doesn't need anything from us. Tammy drives a Mercedes, right? Yeah. God doesn't need your Mercedes. It's a beautiful car. Neither do I. It just gets me here. I know. It's, but it's a nice car. Yeah. And, and you could think, okay, I have, this, I have this car, or I have money in the bank, or I have a beautiful home, or I have whatever you have, you're all excited because you're going to give what you have to God. And God's saying, I don't need what you have. Because whatever it is you have, whether it's money, or talent, ability, Whatever you have, God has more of it already than he knows what to do with. So he doesn't need more money from us. He needs more of us. Now here's what it got real interesting. Because after, immediately after God told me, I want more of you, but I don't need more from you. Then he turned around and said, but sometimes I will take more from my people because sometimes... I will get more of them wow. by allowing them mm. to, to, to get more wow. from them. That's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I felt like I was playing ping pong with God. I was like back and forth watching. Wow. Like. So God said, I want more of you, not more from you, but sometimes he will allow us. It was like God said, I know my people. Isn't that great? Yes. Isn't that great that you don't have to hide from God? He knows you. He knows you. He knows everything about you. He knows about your problems with the bank teller. He understands. He was there. He knows everything that's going on in that little pea brain of yours. He's got it. And he's got it all figured out. And he has already figured out how... To help you get to to give more of yourself to God, because that's what God wants. He wants more of you. Mm -hmm. well, that's good. Now, that's good, sir. second thing God told me after He told me He wanted more of me and more of us mm -hmm. is He said, He said, "Let my people know that I don't. It's not because I'm a selfish God." He said, "I understand what they're going through." Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. what my people are dealing with. Mm -hmm. I know what issues they have. And he said, the reason why I'm telling you to tell my people I want more of them is because I want them to have more of me. And there's a correlation, a direct correlation between how much of you, you hold on to, that you keep from God, how much of your own self you keep from him, and how much of him you can walk in. Mm -hmm. Now, he told me this. He said, let my people know, they have all of me. God's not, it's not a, it's not like God is, is like holding on to some of his power, some of his nature, 
and he's waiting for you to do something so that you will sort of trigger a valve that will release a little more of him. You, we have all of God. You have all there is of God's power, all of his divine nature. I'm going to show you in the Bible because uh, God finally, I finally, God gave me a scripture verse to go along with this. Uh, that was the other thing. I, God almost always speaks to me through his word. And this week he spoke to me and I said, well, I, I thought, okay, well, you'll show me in your word. And what he told me to do was he said, well, just read the New Testament this week. So, so this all comes from the New Testament. And finally on Friday, I, I, I got to Second Peter and got a scripture. We'll, I'll show you that in a minute. But, but God said, I, want my, I need my people to give me more of them because I want them to have more of me. In other words, the more of you you give to God, then the more of God you can access, that you can, you can have. Amen. Not that he's holding back, but you can't access all of him until you give him more of you. You're moving yourself out of the way. Yeah. Oh. So you got to, so, so some of you, and, and one of the first things I asked God about this, as soon as he said this to me, I said, but I don't know how to give you more of me. <laughs> Because I've given God all of me. Yeah. For years, I've, give, I've always given God all of me. I can't remember, probably since I was maybe in my early 20s, when I used to pray and tell God I would do anything he wanted except go to Africa. <laughs> and, and I finally quit praying that in my early 20s, so I'm almost 63. So for 40-some years, I've been giving God all of me. But, God, but yet God said, no, I want more of you. So I've been, all week long, I've been asking God, well, how do I do that? And maybe you're asking yourself the same question because in all honesty, you're sitting here today and you're thinking, well, I don't know how to give God more of me because he already has all of me. And I, I'm, but I'm telling you, God is saying, no, I, there's, 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 and so you need to go to God with this and ask him, well, how can I do this? How can I give you more of me? Because if the more of you you give to him, the release to him, then the more of him you can have. Yes. Yes. So God says, I want, you, I want my people, I want more of them so that they can have more of me. And also, if they have more of me, then they can have more from me. Mm. And I like this part. Me too. Because I realize that our my relationship with God, your relationship with God is not an equal thing. You're, you're not, it's not a, uh, it's not like, well, I give some and he gives some and I give some and he, no, that's not how it works. It's like he gives everything, you give nothing, you receive everything and you give nothing. Mm -hmm. True. So God said, I want my people to give them more of themselves to me so that they can have more of me, and also so that they can have more from me. God doesn't need anything from you, but he wants to give you things from him. So you can't give God something that he can use, but he can give you things. He wants to bless you. He wants to give you stuff. There's things that God wants to do from you, but in order for this all to happen, you have to know how to give more of yourself to him so that he can give more of himself to you and in turn then you can receive more from him. Okay, now it just took me, what, 20 minutes to tell you what God took all week to tell me. But that's the simple, profound word that God has for us this week. Now, I want to take you to 2 Peter chapter 1. Because I'm just going to show you real quick from the Bible everything that I just said from 2 Peter. 2 Peter was written... Uh, Right towards the end of Peter's life. Peter knew, I think he had already probably been uh, consigned to death 
history tells us that Peter was killed by the Emperor Nero. That's not in the Bible, but historically that's what uh, historians have sort of figured out. Uh, so Peter's life ended. Some say that Peter actually was crucified on a cross. And I don't know if this is true, but they say that when they came to, to crucify Peter, Peter said, I am not worthy to die the same way my Savior died. And he asked to be hanged upside down on the cross. Now, I don't know if that's true. That's, that's not uh, in the Bible, but I, I've heard that story before. But historically, we know that Peter died a martyr's death. He was, cruci he was killed for his faith. Well, the book of 2 Peter was written shortly before Peter died. He knew that his life was coming to an end. And Peter knew that his testimony, he was one of the last uh, disciples to, to be alive. He was his, and he knew that his eyewitness account of the life of Jesus was soon, that voice was soon to be silenced. And so he wrote this book, Second Peter, and it's written not to a specific group of people, but it's written generally to all Christians. And it was sort of like his final appeal, if you will, or his final declaration of his faith. And so second, in, in uh, second Peter chapter 1, it says in verse 2, it says, Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now, I'm going to fly through this today, but I'm telling you, if you've studied this, if you read this a few times, there is a wealth of just stuff in, the, in this passage that you can get. We're not going to have time to get anywhere near all of it today. But Peter starts out, he says, grace and peace be yours in abundance. God wants you to have an abundance of grace and peace. He says, and he, he said, grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3, it says, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life mm -hmm. through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. So it says, his divine power has given us everything we need. That's what I said earlier. We already have all that we need. God has given us all of himself. You, you can't, you, you, it's not like God is sitting there waiting and he's saying, well, as soon as my people are ready, then I can give them more of me, more power, more, more wisdom, more love. No, God said, everything that you want, has when, when you received Jesus Christ as your Savior, when you entered into a relationship with God, the Holy Spirit came and lived inside of you. And if you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, which I think all of us do in this room, you have all the divine power of God living in you right now. You're not going to somehow trip a valve or trip a, a lever that's going to open up and, and allow more of God to, to act to, to uh, become available to you. You have it right now living in you. So we have all of God available to us. That's what he says. The divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him. There's that word knowledge again, of, again. Through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. You didn't receive God because of your own uh, ability or because of what you wanted. It says that came because of his glory yes. and his Thank honor. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Now I look around the room and I look in the mirror and I think I don't know how God gets any glory from giving himself to us, but that's what it says. Because of his divine, because his own glory and goodness. So our salvation came because of his goodness, not our goodness. There's nobody in the room that can look, in the, look at God and say, Thank you, God, I, I know that, that you're good, but I'm good also. And so the two of us have formed this partnership. No, that's not how it worked. God said all of, all of salvation came from God's side, from his goodness. Amen. 
It was God, your salvation was given to you in spite of yourself, not because of you. Say that again. So it's his glory. Verse 4 says, Through these. He has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. I talked about the, the condition of the world. Well, God is saying through this, through God's, through our knowledge of God, through our knowing God, through our relationship with God, and because of his divine power, because of his honor and his glory, we may enter in and we can participate in his, his divine nature and we can escape the corruption in the world caused by evil. Well, we could just spend a week talking about that right there. Yeah. Now, getting back to, to us getting more of God because that's, in verse 5, it says, For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith. So here we, here we are now. We already said that God's giving, given us all of him. We have access to all of God. But now Peter is saying, now we're going to start adding things. Because this word add means, it means... There, there might be some things you didn't have that now you're going, now you're going to have access to. Yes. So he says, add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. I had a hard time not stopping here because we could look at each one of those things and and talk about them for a long time. We're not going to do that today, but if you ever want to do a, a word study in the Bible and you want to, if you really want to get into to the meat of God's Word, take verses 5 through 7 and just look up each one of those different things because says, God says, add to your faith goodness. And then to your goodness, add knowledge. And to knowledge, add self-control. So there's this adding thing. There's this, there's this you, you start out with faith. Faith is the very basic thing. Faith is the thing that enabled us to be saved. Mm -hmm. when, when, the, when you first realized that you were a sinner, you could, you could not be saved until you exercise faith, until you put your faith in Jesus. So faith was the very basic, very first part of your salvation. Mm -hmm. And now Peter is saying, to your faith, add goodness. So there's this adding effect. There's this, there's this progressive thing that God is talking about that we actually can access more of God. It's not that we receive more of God. It's that we now have access to more of God. And he's saying, add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and so forth. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, in verse 8, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what Peter is saying here, he said, if you take this journey, if you add these things to your life, if you become more aware of these these. Uh, the very nature of God, because that's what these things all are, verses 5 through 7, they're describing the very nature of God. And by adding those things to your life, he said, they will increase, and uh, he said, if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, so there's, there it's talking again about, about increasing or adding to or or having more access to the nature of God, it will keep you from being ineffective. Or in other words, it will make you more effective and make you more productive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Think of it this way. Think of our relationship with God sort of starts when we walk into a room. Now, when you walk into the room, you immediately have access 
to the whole of everything in, in, that's in this room. When you were out in the hallway, you were not in, you were not, think of God being in this room. When you entered into a relationship, when you trusted Jesus Christ, you walked into the room and immediately you had all of God that was, a, that was in the room. The whole of God was available to you. But think of it as as you walk in, as, the farther you walk into the room, the more access you have mm -hmm. to God. It's not so much a matter of, of how much of God is available to you, it's how much you choose to access. Ooh. It's, like, it's like God, it's like when you got saved, when you trusted Jesus and the Holy Spirit came and lived inside of you, you immediately, there was immediately deposited a billion dollars in your bank account. Wow. But maybe you only had access to a couple hundred dollars because you didn't know how to access the rest of it. It was there, it's in your name, it's your money, but if you don't know how to access, if, if you don't have a checkbook or a card or can go to the bank physically and draw the money out, you're not accessing it. Mm -hmm. That money doesn't do you any good if it's just sitting in a bank account someplace and you don't know how or don't have the knowledge of how to access it. And so God is saying, I need you to give up more of me so that you can access, I, I need you to give up more of yourself so that you can have access to more of me. And by you having access to more of me, I'm, you can walk into this room and by adding, adding to your faith goodness and to your goodness add self-control and so forth and so on. And as you walk into the room, you now are accessing more of the power of God in your life. And Peter says, by, incre by that increasing those measures, you will become more productive. Yes. You'll become more efficient. You'll become more effective and productive. Yes. It says in verse 9, But whosoever, whoever does not have them, is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sin. Some of, I, I don't, I don't, I, 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 I miss this part. Um, some, some of you are doing this. Some of you are letting your past sins dictate your life. Yes. Oh. Because you're 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 not accessing all of God. Yes. That's why God is saying, I need more of you so that I can give you more of me, so that your past won't have power over you mm -hmm. to slow you down. Yes. Yes. To keep yes. you from being yes. effective yes. and doing are completing the assignment that God has for you. That's what that verse says. Because says, whoever, if you don't do this, if you don't give God more of you and access more of Him, what's going to happen is you're actually, you're, you're not going to sit still. You're going to go backwards. Mm -hmm. Because your past is now going to have dominion or power over you. Whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sin. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. Folks, there is so much. This is such a profound thing. Yes. He says, confirm, or you need to... You need to um, you need to come into agreement with your calling, mm. with your election. You need to confirm or you need to come into agreement with what God's called you to be and what God's called you to do. Confirm it. You have to do this. It's not enough for God to, to have it all available to you if you haven't confirmed it, going back to the bank account, 
if, if, if I told you you have a billion dollars in the bank and you don't call the bank and confirm that it's there, then you don't know whether it's there and you don't know how to access it. And that money's just going to sit there. And you might go on your, on your way. You might live the rest of your life in poverty and scraping by and living from payday to payday, wondering how you're going to pay the bills, worrying about whether or not you're going to be able to, to, to come up with $100 to do this or $10 to do that or what you're going to eat tomorrow. You're worried about all these things in your life. Meanwhile, you've got a billion dollars sitting in a bank someplace and the only reason you don't you're not using it, and the only reason it's not powerful in your life is because you never called to confirm that it was there. Mm. Mm. And God is saying to us today, I need you to confirm this power that you have available to you so that you can be productive. Mm. Confirm your calling mm. and election. Yes. For if you do these things... Yeah, you will never stumble. And this is the last part, and I love this verse. Because it says, And you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm going to read that again. You will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When I read that this week, I realized all of these things that I talked about earlier, the state of our country, the state of our world, the, 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 all of the situations and trials and problems that all my friends are going through, that I myself am going through, all of these things don't matter because I have received... And I am, I, am, I am receiving a welcome into God's eternal, boy, that word eternal just really resonated with me this week. God is receiving you. He's welcoming you into his eternal kingdom. Mm. You know, when you learn to walk in this, when you learn... To realize that every day that God is welcoming you into his eternal kingdoms, your day-to-day -day issues are going to disappear like a mist. They're just going to vanish. Because compared to eternity, whatever you got going today that you're worried about tomorrow is a small thing indeed. Yes. I'm not trying to, to say your problems are small. I'm not trying to tell you that your worries and your fears and your, and your emotions aren't, aren't causing you grief and stress. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is if you will walk into the room, if you will give God more of you and allow God to give him more, more of him, give you more of himself, and that you will receive more from God, your problems, your challenges, all of them, both the big ones and the small ones, are going to, to disappear like they never existed. Because you will understand and you will begin to walk in the understanding and the realization that you have been welcomed into God's eternal kingdom and there's nothing in the world that is going to bother us in the eternal kingdom of God say that last one again. there's nothing in the world that you're going through now that you are going to take into your eternity all of your money issues, all of your health issues, all of your relationship issues, all everything that you're concerned about today 
is going to disappear when we walk into eternity. And right now, God is welcoming us into his eternal kingdom. God wants more of us so that he can give us more of him. So that we can access more of him. So that we can receive more from him. So that he can welcome us into his eternal kingdom. Father God, thank you for